Hey everyone, grace, peace, and blessings. Welcome. Thank you for joining me in another video. Our topic for discussion is healing a broken spirit. I don't claim to have all of the answers. And to be quite honest, this topic is a very big topic, a very vast topic. Actually, it's one that I could probably do a whole workshop or a seminar on. But for the purpose of this video, my aim is to, to equip you, the viewers, with some tools and with some strategies to help you along the way on your path and journey toward healing. So what is a broken spirit? Well, a broken spirit occurs, it typically occurs when we go through a situation and experience or circumstance that is so painful, that causes so much suffering, that it penetrates the soul and it reaches the spirit. And once something like that enters our spirit, it shakes and it can shatter and break the very core and essence of who we are. Some of you watching this, you have been through such experiences, unfortunately, such circumstances, unfortunately. Some of you who may be watching, you haven't gone through anything quite so painful yet, but if you keep on living, it will probably happen to you. So my prayer for you all is that you are healed. My prayer for you all that um, what I share with you will be a blessing to your life. So let's let's talk about it. How do we heal from that point of, of brokenness? A good illustration uh, of a broken person and of a broken spirit is, is Job in the Bible. So Job was somebody who had everything. He had the favor of God. He was a blessed man. He had great prosperity and riches and all the uh, material, material trappings that you can think of. He had a blessed family and everything which is going so great in his life. And God allowed everything to be taken from him. And he ended up with nothing. And everything was gone. His, his children, his family, his friends, his health. His, even his own wife told him to curse God and die. So Job in chapter 17, verse one, he says, he laments and he says, my spirit is broken. My days are cut short and a grave awaits me. So when we go through and we suffer a broken spirit, we think about death. We think about how life is no longer enjoyable. So you know you have a broken spirit when you just lose uh, your enthusiasm for life because of the experiences that you go, go through and you don't think that things could get better. When that pain and that hurt and that suffering, whether it was trauma from the past or an abusive relationship or a relationship that ended, a divorce or separation or a breakup from a significant other or re rejection or failure in something that you were trying to do and it just broke you or whatever it may be, that, that penetrated you, that cut you to your core and broke you to your core, you lose the ability and the will to live and to move on. And some people at that point, they just give up. They may not take their lives or commit suicide, but they, they just give up. And the thing that we should know about a broken spirit, if you go through or if you have a broken spirit, is that you will not be the same. Those of us who have suffered a broken spirit, just know that you will not be the same, but we have options. We have the option of taking that pain, that suffering, that hurt, and allowing it to make us stronger, to overcome it, to allow that those situations and those experiences to be our stepping stone, or we can take a step back and allow it, allow it to drop us and to pull us back in the pit. So we can either step up from it or remain in a pit from it. So I want each and every one of you to take what you've been through and to allow that to be your stepping stone and to level up and to become a stronger and better person by it. You can be healed. So how do we get to the point of healing from a broken spirit? Well, the key word is restoration. And we have to start in the soul area before the, the spirit can be repaired, right? 
So what we need to know when we suffer a broken spirit, our inner life and our inner being becomes fractured. And we can take an example from the human body. Let's say if you had a broken bone, you go to the doctor and they discover your bone is broken. And what, 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 what will the doctor do? The doctor will reset the bone so it could heal. And basically what they're, what they're doing is the doctor is taking what was out of order and out of balance and putting it in balance. So that one, the number one key thing to restoring yourself and to your path toward healing, if you ha you've had a, a, if you suffer from a broken spirit, is to know that you need to repair the imbalance because a broken spirit is going to put your whole life and the way you see things and the way you move throughout life out of balance. So we have to begin to create balance to restore the order from the brokenness and begin to put things back together again and to restore that line of order, that line of peace, that line of routine, right? So um, just know that a broken spirit will disrupt your life. It will dis disrupt your inner life and how you do things. And when people suffer from a broken spirit, you know, they, they may go through depression, bouts of depression. They don't want to do the things that they used to do. Or, you know, it's just like you just lose, the, you know, your, your enthusiasm for life. But just know that when you go through these things that you have to remember that I'm out of order and I have to put myself back in order and back in alignment so I can heal. So what does that look like? So it looks like practically that if you go through something, you've been through trauma, you've gotten out of an abusive relationship, um, you've, you've had some bad news physically, you know, you maybe you're going through a sickness or an illness or um, some sort of disability that you're um, living with. Just know that the more order that you bring into your life, so it's basically doing the things that is most useful to you at the time. Just know that when you have, and when you're suffering from a broken spirit, that on the inside, you're in critical condition. So that means you have to do everything in your power, everything in your power, to bring and maintain a routine of order, even if you don't feel like it. So that's doing everything that is most useful to you at the time. So that may uh, mean radical self-care, making sure that if you're the type of person where you're always doing things for other people, that means during this season of brokenness, you have to put yourself first. You're in critical condition on the inside. That means in this season, you have to ramp up your self-care. In this season, you have to look after yourself and even down to, you know, physically making sure that you're, you're getting rest and making sure that you're eating well, making sure that, you know, you're not putting yourself uh, under a lot of stress and taking, removing yourself out of stressful situations if you can. Doing everything that you can, that you know to do, that is most useful and helpful the things in your life, the things that you know that's going to bring you joy and happiness. We're all different, so that's going to look different for each and every one of us. But whatever it is, you have to know that you're, you're in critical condition and that you have to do whatever you can do to bring order. So once we practice things like radical self-care, meaning putting yourself uh, first, doing everything that you need to do, you know, waking up and uh, moving through peace in the morning, waking up, taking time out for yourself, doing the things you know that will put you into alignment, like, you know, like prayer, like meditation, like working out, you know, exercising, doing all of the things, uh, treating your body well, treating your mind well, um, you know, turning off the news and the nonsense and, you know, just the, the things that are going to clutter your thoughts things that may bring you into you know depression things that may bring you out of alignment all of the things that you know that is helpful for you and to you you have to do that so that's part of the process toward healing is to um repairing the imbalance and that starts on the inside so that's what it looks like and also another key thing when it comes to restoring order in your life you know, restoring order may mean that you have to develop a routine or put yourself into a routine 
uh, e even if you're just, you know, uh, laser laser focused on that routine, all that you need to do to to heal yourself and to become whole again. But a key thing is that you can't bring order to your life if you're in the environment that made you sick or that that crushed you. If you're in an environment that crushed you, if it's a toxic environment, whether it be at work, I mean, <laughs> having certain jobs and being in certain environments in the workplace can crush your soul. I've seen it happen. Um, I have been through things as well. So we got to think about that thing too. Being in relationships with toxic people and with dangerous people and unsafe people. Those are the things that could crush our soul, especially if we're in an abusive situation and dealing with difficult people for a long period of time. So that might mean in order to bring that balance back, you have to remove yourself. And I'm saying we have to be radical about this thing because if you have a crushed spirit, you're in critical condition. So you have to do everything you can to cut ties with certain people, to get yourself physically out of environments because you can't heal in the same environment that made you sick, right? You can't heal around sick people. So you have to basically remove yourself out of those situations, away from those people, so you can give yourself the time and to the space to heal. So it's basically practicing radical self-care, getting your life in alignment and order, doing the things that you know that's helpful, and removing yourself from the people and from the circumstances and from the environments that um, made you unwell and that led you to this state of brokenness, right? So the next thing in the journey toward healing and toward restoration, because remember, with a broken spirit, restoration is key. The next thing is faith. Faith and healing goes hand in hand. And it just reminds me of uh, the story in the Gospels in uh, Mark chapter five, where we get the story of the woman who had for 12 years suffering with a blood condition. Uh, issue of blood, you know, in uh, the Bible as it's, as it's called. So this lady, she suffered with this physical condition for 12 years of bleeding that wouldn't stop. And she heard Jesus was going to be in town and she thought to herself, you know, even if I can't get near him, if I could just touch his clothes, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, I know I can be healed. If I can just touch him, even a part of him, even what he's wearing, I know I can be healed. So she fought her way through the crowd when Jesus was in town and everyone was around him wanting a healing, wanting a blessing. And she pushed her way through and she was able to touch a part of his clothing. And immediately Jesus knew the virtue went out from him. The power left out from him. He's like, who touched me? And his disciples are like, Jesus, there's like hundreds of people around you. <laughs> what do you mean who touched me? He's like, no, no, no. Somebody here has some faith. And then he saw the woman, he turned to her and he said, you know, Mark 5 and 34, daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your pain and from your suffering. And he said that quite a few times. So Jesus's earthly ministry was mainly healing people, but the people were healed by their faith. So just know that our faith will put us in a position to be healed from just about anything, from anything. The way we think. So when it comes to brokenness, just know that your faith is going to be key and instrumental to your healing. There isn't anything that God can't heal and that your faith is your superpower in this process, in this journey toward healing. If you have a broken spirit. So even if you don't feel like it, even if you don't feel like God is near, what you have to do is change your mindset and begin to believe that God will equip you with the power to heal you from this state, to restore your joy and your happiness, and to make you even stronger than you were before. And that God is able to put you in a, a, a different place, in a, a place of peace, and that he's able to heal what's happened to you on the inside. Now, just know, those of you who are watching, that everyone is not the same. We don't all go through the same exact experiences and everybody's time for healing, their timeline for healing is not going to be the same. I might overcome and, um, certain traumas and things that have that put me in a broken state quicker than someone else. But just know that as long as you put your faith and your trust in God, he's going to set you up for healing. 
So just know that your faith and your belief in God, knowing that God has the power to do it for you, even if you feel powerless, once you begin to believe, so we, we, what we need to understand is that faith, what faith does, it, it activates things uh, supernaturally. We have got, it's actually part of our divine and creative power that God has given us the ability to uh, believe. And through our belief, we are able to manifest things. So even if you feel broken, even if you feel like no one wants to be bothered with you and that you're insignificant or that you'll never be able to overcome what you've been through, just know if you just believe and trust that God got it and believe and trust that God has the power, just believing that God has the power to heal and help you will begin to heal and help you. So as you believe and as you begin to switch and change your mindset out of lack to having, well, God, what God will do, he begin to empower you and strengthen you and you will begin to feel yourself being healed. You begin to feel your situation, not your situation, but your disposition change, your attitude change, your mindset change, your outlook toward life change as you begin to believe and trust in God. So faith is key. Another key thing in our in restoration, if you want to heal a broken spirit is, believe it or not, is rest. Yes, we need to rest. So what does rest look like? Uh, in Psalm 55 verse 22, it says, cast your burden on the Lord and he will sustain you. He will never permit the righteous to be moved. So rest, when it comes to inner turmoil, when it comes to spiritual things, you know, when we think rest, we make, oh, we think physically, okay, go to sleep. Okay, sit down, chill out. Rest spiritually is turning the burden and the suffering and the pain over to God. Because when we carry the trauma, when we carry the scars and the pain and the suffering that we've been going through and we harbor and we sit in that state of brokenness, what we're doing is that we're doing a whole lot of work. So once we take what we have been holding on to, to that has been pulling us down, that has been harming us, when we turn that over to God, we'll get into a state of rest. And just so you know, the body is always a good illustration to what happens in the spirit realm, believe it or not. You know, there's a connection there. You know, my belief is that the body is the physical manifestation of the spirit. So we could learn a lot of lessons if we just study our human body or just bodies in general. So basically, you know, when we break something in our body, let's say, you know, you break a leg, break an arm, even if it's a sprain or something like that. What the doctor is going to tell you, the doctor is going to tell you, stay off your leg or you have to rest so you can heal. So resting for us means that rest is instrumental and is key because it will allow the time for us to heal. So we have to turn it over to God. We have to put it into his hands and to know that we don't have to carry that. We don't have to allow that to dwell within us or to take all of that in. Yes, I know it hurts. Yes, I know it happened. Yes, it's probably not even your fault and you were probably innocent. Um, yes, uh, it, it, it's painful. Yes, it feels like sometimes you can't go on, but guess what? You can take all of that and turn it over to God. And once we turn those things over to God, God will give us rest. And the Lord says in his word that he can, you know, if we cast our burdens on him, he will sustain us and he will never permit us to be moved. So what that means is that what he'll begin to do is to bring everything together. He'll begin to heal us once we turn it over to him. He'll begin to sustain us and to keep us and we'll move to another level. You know, healing is about healing and faith is really about not so much about us getting what we want, but it's about us 
getting to new levels and growing spiritually. So this thing that you've been through, this thing that rocked your world, this thing that destroyed you in so many different ways, just know that you can overcome. Just know that you can be healed. Just know that you have a God that has your back and that his power is available to each and every one of us. And just know that your faith can heal you. Just know that once you put the work in and once you start to put things in order in your life, that healing is available to you. Those are some of the steps and some of the, some of the ways that you can move toward healing when you have a broken spirit. My prayer and my hope is that this blessing, this video has been a blessing to your life. Please share this video to someone who may need to hear these words of encouragement. Uh, please also subscribe to my channel, uh, like this video, drop a comment. And as always, thank you for your support and for watching. And I will see you in the next video. Take care and God bless.